reaching the highest point. This is the dream that has sailed across the skies of the human mind for a very long time. That highest point is the point at which we achieve excellence in whatever we do. But that excellence must start here on Earth, in the objects and structures we build and in the many jobs we perform. At NASA, there are numerous jobs, each crucial to the space program as a whole. hazardous operations such as uh, construction sites, making sure that they are following OSHA standards, the Occupational Safety and Health Act. We're mostly concerned with investigating potentially hazardous situations on the job for both contractor and NASA personnel. Um, most anything that's potentially hazardous. I became a safety specialist through a specialty training for entry professionals. And we go through the process of just applying for the job, then we'll evaluate it and select it. Brenda Willis is one of a growing number of women who are deeply involved in the various programs and projects of NASA. Is it necessary for a person to have a PhD to advance in the workforce of NASA? Not at all. There are so many different ways in which a person can pursue a new career within this organization. How did you get your start, Ms. Willis? In high school, they had the program, you know, where they would go around and recruit students that were interested in the secretarial field who had had some experience in typing and shorthand and things of that nature. And I started out in the clerical field with NASA. And by taking the civil service exam, you know, I became, came into NASA as a clerk typist and just worked myself, you know, right up through the ranks by going to college in the evenings. I've worked on the shuttle program since I've been working here at NASA over the five and a half, or if you count the contract time, six and a half years that I've worked here. And uh, it's very fascinating, ex especially when you watch the shuttle and that uh, orbiter just glides in and lands on target. It, you, get, you get goosebumps knowing that you were an active part in making history happen. Well, the space program has always held a fascination to me. I can remember that when they first landed on the moon, we sat up all night uh, my mother was making hot chocolate and she was sitting there and we were, all of us kids were sitting around the television set waiting for the purple people to come out and eat up the astronauts. So <laughs> I have to admit that I never believed that I would actually be here taking a part in all of uh, this technology and, and all of this going to the moon and, and uh, unique happening. Shirley Chevalier is an electrical engineer or on the space shuttle. Shirley Chevalier, how did you become an engineer? Uh, I graduated from a high school that had a senior class of about 38 people, and it's a, a central Texas town of about 2,000 people. So if you were considering a profession, you either had the doctor who was a role model or you had the school teachers who were role models. And I was afraid of the sight of blood, and teachers didn't make enough money. So uh, my oldest brother was in his sophomore year in college, majoring in civil engineering when I graduated from high school. So I, um, about that time, he asked me, well, what are, you, what are you gonna do? I said, well, I imagine I'll go to college. He said, well, what are you gonna major in? I said, I don't know, maybe engineering. He said, well, Forget it, said, I'm a felon, and engineering is rough for me. He said, I don't think you could make it in engineering. And I said, well, I think I can. He said, anyway, what, which one are you going to major in? And I said, well, how many kinds do they have? And he says, well, that's civil engineering, architectural, uh, mechanical, and electrical. And I said, which one is the hardest? And he said, electrical engineering. So I said, okay, I'm majoring in electrical engineering. And uh, 
I graduated in May of 1971 with a degree in electrical engineering.